Now, when I began in ministry, this is not what I was going to talk about today. But I'm here, folks. And I'm not backing away from this one. Hmm? When I began in ministry, I began in the miraculous. God began to do things at Henry's hands when he would speak. I wasn't an elder in the church I attended. I was just me. I did become part of the radio station there as a radio announcer in Christian radio, and that came a little later, but that came a little later. That church, big church of 1500, They'd have cell group meetings. You're familiar with that. Cell group meetings is when an elder would have people over and once a month or whatever and do a little Bible study and they'd break for fellowship. It's called cell, cell group meetings. And I, I would go. I had an elder and his wife, so I'd go and tend the cell groups. And, and they'd have the little Bible study by the elder. And after the Bible study was over, and they'd have the food in the kitchen to eat and fellowship, which is great, I didn't get a chance to eat. Because the people that came to the cell group didn't go to the elder. They formed lines for Henry to pray for them. It was very uncomfortable to be in the living room praying for people while the elder was fellowshipping, which was okay with me. And I didn't even think about it. Today, if I thought about it, I'd go, whoa, I really interfered. Back in those days, I was just a naive believer. People want to be prayed for a piece of cake. Let's go for it. And God began to deal with things. God began to heal. Then later in this church, the head intercessor, which was the pastor's mother-in-law, died. And I'd been very active in intercessory prayer. Every single Monday night, I was part of that group. No matter I had my own business, didn't make any difference. I'd take time off early. I'd be ready, cleaned up, ready to go. And, that, and when the, and she passed away, because I've been so faithful for such a long period of time that they asked me to take over as head intercessor. So Monday night we'd have intercessor prayer meetings. It would start at 7. But they would get out at 1 and 2 in the morning. Not because we were praying for the nation. It's because people were coming wanting prayer for healing. What are you going to do with them? They're coming. They don't want to pray. They could care less about anybody else. They had needs. And they knew I would be there. And, and I, you know, what are you going to do with them? You, you pray for them. Well, later on, uh, I had an existing church down the road about 40 miles or so. Uh, asked me to get involved in their church. They had some leadership problems. And later, the pastor resigned. And I was asked to fill in a few Sundays, and then eventually I was asked to stay in pastor. So I began pastoring my first church within three years of becoming born again. And the miraculous was happening. And great things were happening. Our Sunday evening services were for healing. We started at 6, sometimes get out at 1 and 2 in the morning, Monday mornings. People would drive sometimes two hours one way just to come to a place where they could receive prayer and something would happen. I saw things that if I wrote a book, it would, you don't even read it in the book of Acts yet. I saw evil spirits do things that are beyond your imagination through people. I, I saw things and I learned things and I observed things and I seen God do things that set the stage for who I'm not today because I yearn for the day that is more than just being born again. I yearn for the day that the church sets the standard for power and integrity in the earth. I yearn for the day the first century church is back again. I yearned for the days that I could, in that old storefront church, when I'd watch a demonized person take their fingers and catch a piece of asbestos tile glued to the floor and pick it off just like it was a napkin with demonic power and cast that out and see them free. 
I heard things come out of people's mouths that our devils would speak to me and say things to me. I saw and heard things that if I wrote it today, you'd think I made it up. But I'm an eyewitness. I'm an eyewitness to a God that's all-powerful. And he's my father, and he's yours. And he's still on the throne, contrary to public opinion. And he still answers prayer. So I began to pray for people. It's amazing the things that happened. It's amazing the things I observed. And all of a sudden the bottom dried up. When I started, probably 95% of everybody I prayed for got, got healed or delivered or set free. And then I was fortunate to get 5% of anyone free in Jesus' name. It's kind of discouraging to go from, whoa, to... So after six months of that 95% failure, I finally had enough sense to talk to God. That's called prayer. And I said, what gives? How come, whoo, and then, God spoke to me in my heart, and words began to form in my mind. God said, because they don't want me, they want you. He said, the ones coming to you right now are coming because they've heard that things are happening. He said, I'm not their Lord. The devil's their Lord. And then God spoke to me. He said, Henry, Satan has a legal right to my people's lives, and they don't even know it. I said, what? Are you the devil talking to me? The church that I, I cut my teeth on says that, 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 that once you get born again, that the power of devil, Satan was broken, and he no longer had a legal right to your life? Are you a devil talking to me? Because if what you're saying to me is true, that the Satan can have a legal right to born again Christians' lives, you better show that to me in the Bible voice. Because I ain't budging unless I have line and verse. Well, the Bible says, try every spirit. More than not, it's of God. And how do you try a spirit? You hold every thought captive, casting down every imagination, every high and lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And what's the knowledge of God? The Word of God. Well, it didn't take long, and I bumped into the famous scripture that we use here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24, 25, and 26. The servant of the Lord must not strive, must be gentle unto all men, patient, able to teach, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves that God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth that they may recover themselves from the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by the devil at be the devil's will. Do you realize what I just quoted? That the servant of the Lord must come and instruct people that are held captive by Satan at Satan's will. That I can bring truth to them. They can bring them to repentance. That they can repent to God for serving that wrong way of thinking. That then they can recover themselves from that power of Satan and become free in Christ. I had my smoking gun scripture. Oh. I said, well, what things, what things, what things, voice? Oh, Lord. God spoke to me. He said, Henry, when you pray for somebody, and I don't honor your words and your faith, it isn't because you don't have any faith. It isn't I didn't hear you. They have an issue in their life that they're hanging on to that keeps my, interferes with my glory. And if I heal them, and let them keep this sin in their life, they wouldn't stay free because the sin would produce the same problem and they'd lose their healing and I'd get blamed for it. So why should I heal people that are going to lose their healing? That's, I'm not a God of confusion. That's confusion. He said, I want you to learn the process of, of fulfilling 2 uh, Timothy chapter 2. And what is the first part of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 24, Henry? The servant of the Lord must not strive, must be gentle unto all men, patient, able to teach. 
in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, opposition to God. He said, begin and get, get involved, begin to disciple my people, and begin to remove the dead works. And as you teach them to hate the dead works, as you teach them to hate sin, as you teach them to hate those things that are not of me, then they'll begin to repent to me and get these things that are life. That will remove the, the, the separation between them and me, and then I can be to them what I want to be. Because Henry Healing is the children's bread. But sometimes they like moldy bread, not fresh bread. You see, Israel didn't want manna. They didn't want angels' food. They got bored with picking up something they didn't have to work for every morning. And we've been working ever since. Lord, give us angels' food again. So what do they eat in heaven? Angels' food. I think it's a good deal. So as, as we begin to in, move through this, and I'm going to go to a place of conclusion here. As I moved through the years, all of a sudden we went from 95% failure back to probably a little better percentage of 50 or 60% success, 70 sometimes, when people begin to deal with their lives. That's the For My Life program, folks. That was birthed out of disciple. The For My Life program is a discipleship program to identify what is not of God and remove it and get it out of your lives. About three years ago, thereabouts, and the program for my life has been pretty successful. It's produced a lot of things for God. It's wonderful. Except God had a problem with me. He told me. God came to me again a few years ago. You've heard me say this before, and I'm going to say it again until it ignites. Because this isn't about me, folks. It's about us. Either this church becomes the New Testament church, or I'm going to go out and just become a wandering prophet ministry by myself. No, I cannot do that. Nor am I going to do that. I want to stay here and irritate and irritate and irritate until God forms who he is in our midst. And I will not back away from this. And if you don't like it, go find a dead church. There are plenty. Go find it. It ain't going to be this one because I'm going to interfere with deadness as fast as I can. You want a church, nothing is happening, go find it. But if you want to join yourself here, you need to ignite and be part of the solution for mankind, and let's become who we're supposed to be. I'm not interested in playing church. I'm not interested in something coming from 500 miles away, holding their hand up with the miraculous. I want to see it as a way of life. Not the happenstance. I want devils to scream out when people walk in here. Ah, oh, get me out of here. I can't stand the power of God in this place. Let them bring the demonized in. We'll cast the devils out and tell them to sit down and have a service with us. Well, they might just cause a distraction. Bring them on, Lord. Bring the demonized and the crazies in here so we can get them delivered in Jesus' name. Say, that makes me afraid. My subject was about facing death this morning. I didn't get there. I'll get there again. In ministry, I faced evil spirits even wanting to kill me right to my nose. And they could not touch me. I had a man, a trained, a trained government assassin for our government worldwide. I said our government had a trained assassin. I got saved. And I remember sitting in a room, and he had so much murder. He was so bad that when he'd get to drinking one time, he didn't like somebody, a bunch of guys around. He smashed a beer bottle, smashed it on the end of a table, took the jagged edge, and ran it right into the other man's face as hard as he could push it. That's the kind of stuff that was in this man. And after he got saved, he, he was still terrorizing his children and his wife. He was a terrorist, even as a Christian. And I got him in ministry. I remember sitting, and I had an elder of the church 
sitting over in a rolling chair, and I, he was sitting on a sofa, and I was in another rolling chair when I decided to confront the spirit of murder. This guy could break your neck with one chop of his hand. Snap! Just like that. When I touched that spirit of murder, he rolled over, he came off that thing, his hand came up, and he, that devil spoke through him and said, I'm going to kill you right now, Henry. The elder was petrified, and the elder went into fear. And under the, my peripheral, I saw the elder was going to end of fear. I said, sit down, shut up. He's, that devil's feeding off your fear. Stop it. And I went right back in this guy's face. He's right in my face, just roaring. And the hand came up to kill me. And I said, make my day. You touch God's anointed. It'll be the pit before your time. Bring it on. Nose to nose. And his hand came up, and his neck muscles bulged, his face turned red, his hand shuddered like this until he went limp. And it was over. And he was free. Are you ready for that type of ministry? And that's a little scary. I don't know if I can handle that. Then you're not ready to overcome unto death. My subject today was, are you ready to overcome the temptation of fear of dying? We're dealing with temptation. Temptation has been our subject here. Next time I come back, whenever that is, I'll bring the rest of this as we move through continuing education. Let me finish my point, and then I'm ready to be done. As we move through this, these years, about three years ago, God spoke to me. And he said, Henry, I have something against you. I hear when God speaks to me, it comes as thoughts, feelings, impressions, as if it was my own mind. I've learned the voice. I've learned where it comes from. I understand theta brainwave very well, folks, how it functions. I said, I was shocked. I was doing my sin checklist. I got about 12 or 13, Lord, is that it? No, sir. It's not your sin list. He said, you're interfering with my glory. I'm interfering with your glory? Yes, Henry. Henry, I know that I taught you well and you learned well. Uh, you learned sanctification as well as anybody on the planet has learned how to teach sanctification. And I've honored that. But Henry... Here's where scripture began to come to me. I will have mercy on whom I shall have mercy. And you won't let me unless you filter them through the process of sanctification. So, I may just want to heal and deliver a few unqualified people just to show my love and my power, and you won't let me do it. So you're interfering with my glory. I said, what should I do, Lord? He said, I want you to do what you did the first time when it wasn't working. Begin to pray and minister to people in my name. The Father can come and heal and deliver if he decides to do that. That we can have our glory through you. But then God spoke to him, but Henry, if you do this and we don't heal and deliver through you, what do you do next, Henry? Lord, I do what you taught me to do when it wasn't working the first time. Get involved in their life, begin to sanctify them, show them their sin issues, that it can be removed, that your glory can come to their life, and you can, they can be healed and delivered. He said, it's not one or the other, it's both, sir. It's not one or the other, it's both. But you must take the chance that I just might be want to be God any time I feel like it. I want the Father to be God any time He feels like it. And He doesn't need our mechanisms, our mythologies, our ideas, our sanctification teachings. He doesn't need nothing. He just wants to be Dad. And I want that birthed in your hearts. 
Why am I hollering for? Because I'm not interested in status quo. That's religion. I want the impossible. I want that thing that man says cannot happen. I want to be able to speak to the rock and see the water gush out. It's easy to strike the rock, but give me a rock I can just speak to. That he can have the glory.